Now, this lesson, we're going to be investigating this last final object within the topic of parametrics. We're not finished with the topic of parametrics, but this is the last time I'll tell you about like, hey, here's a new object you've never heard of before, uh, a new equation, a new formula to learn that kind of thing, okay? So this is the last one because it's sort of the weirdest and most complicated. It's called the chord of contact. We've heard of chords of contact before in circles, right? Just from the name, you can tell me some things about it. What does chord mean in the context of one of these? What, what is a chord? What is a chord? Yeah, sure. Okay, yes, yeah, so to be as specific as possible, we'd say it's an interval, like it's got a start, it's got an end, that joins any two points on the parabola, right? So you've drawn a parabola now, put your finger somewhere, put your finger somewhere else, the interval joining those is a chord, okay? But this is not just any chord, it's a chord of, of contact. What might that mean? Think back to circles. What, what a chord of contact, like what are these extra words indicate? Any thoughts? What was a chord of contact for a circle? If that's a chord of contact, what makes it a chord of contact? Because right now that's just a chord. Right? It touches a, a particular object, right? What object does it touch? In the, in the context that we were talking about before, we would have said like a tangent, right? And I think that we, this was part of that big long theorem that had an abbreviation, if you recall. Let me put in some extra lines and it will help you. Right? So in this case here, I would say that the angle between a tangent and the chord of contact, so there's the angle I'm talking about, equals what? It's the angle in the alternate segment, that, that guy over there. Okay? There's, the, there's the windsurfer, if you recall that guy. Okay? So the chord of contact is not just any chord, it's a chord that touches a particular feature, namely a tangent. Okay? Now I have not drawn any tangents on here yet, so you're going to need your ruler here, and we're going to draw not just one, but two tangents. Here's how we're going to do it. Pick a point somewhere below or outside your parabola. So not in here, don't do it in here. Find a point somewhere in this region here. Don't make it too far away, because otherwise what you're about to do will be kind of hard. So I'm going to pop mine down here. Okay, this is an external point. Uh, it's called an external point because it's not on the parabola, it's, it's on the outside. Okay, so we might label it as such, this is an external point. And we'll give it the coordinates x0, y0. When we usually uh, pick like an, a random arbitrary point, we usually call it x1, y1. But we've already used x1, y1 to indicate a point that is on the parabola. Right, x1, y1, that's like in Cartesian form. So this is not on the parabola, so that's why I'm labeling it a little bit different. Okay. Grab your ruler now, and from your external point, just like with circles, you should be able to draw a pair of tangents that meet the parabola. I'll show you how to find them. If you go from your external point, and you just move your ruler until it's like, bam, there we go. That's a tangent, right? So there's one, there we go. You can join up your first tangent. But if you keep on rotating your ruler around, right, around this way, you're going to find a second tangent. So in my case, it's going to look something like this. There we go. So with your ruler just moving it around, so long as it goes to the external point, you should be able to find this second tangent. And you're done. Okay. No matter where you've placed your external point, you should be able to find your pair of tangents. And it has two points of contact. There's one over here and one over here. Okay? So remember we said a chord is going to have, uh, it's going to join two points on the parabola. Well, here are our points. Okay? So being that our external point is x0, y0, let's call these guys x1, y1, and x2, oops, that's meant to be a comma, Y2. Okay. If you have another color there as a bonus, we can now draw in the chord of contact from x1, y1 to x2, y2. So here's where mine goes. Once you've done that, go ahead and label it chord of contact.
Right, now every time we've introduced an object in parametrics, um, the first or primary question that we've had is, well, what is the equation or what are the coordinates of that thing, right? You know about a directrix, like where is that? You can tell me where it is. Where's the focus? Where are, what's, what's the equation of the tangents? What's the equations of the normals? You can find the equations of all these things. Once you've got the equation, you know exactly where it is. Well, we want to find out where the equation of the chord of contact is. Now, I just want you to think for a brief moment before I start to walk you through the process. If this is all the information that you know, um, we'll just stay with the stock standard vanilla parabola at the moment, nothing too complicated. If you start with this parabola and you've got any point you like anywhere on the outside, how would you go about finding the equation of this line? What would you do? I'm going to give you 60 to 90 seconds to actually think. Just don't actually do it, but just map out a strategy. What would be the first thing that you do? What kind of information would you get from this? Would you differentiate? Would you use one of the forms you already know? Take some time to think before I show you how it can be done, one of the ways, and then we'll see if any of you actually can predict something of the path we're going to take. Okay, so I'll give you a minute to just reflect and think about it. And write something down if you, if you come up with something, okay? The line perpendicular to the tangent at a given point. Well, I mean, it, it, it could be. Conceivably, it could be. But the, the one I've drawn is not. Okay. As I was saying, I, didn't, I don't expect an answer out of you. I just want you to go through the process of thinking, like, what could I do here? Um, it's not obvious, is it? Right? Like, whatever way, like, nothing falls out naturally. It looks like it's actually going to be quite a complicated mess. Okay? Because when you think about, like, oh, if I've got this external point over here, I, I don't know how to find the equations of tangents from an external point. I only know how to find the equations of tangents from points on the parabola. Um, by the way, just while we're thinking about that, that has, we like, we have a formula for this, right? What is the equation of a tangent to a parabola, a point on a parabola, like this? I'll give you a clue. It starts with an x. <laughs> okay, in this case, x, x, 1 equals what? Very good. Times y plus y1. It's actually a really simple formula, right? It's like, wow, no, look, Ma, no reference sheet, okay? You've already you know, gotten a sense of what it is, even if maybe under example conditions you're not quite there yet, which is why we give you a reference sheet. This thing here is the tangent at x1, y1. Yeah? I know how to find that tangent, but I don't know how to find a tangent from here. So that's a bit awkward, right? There's another tangent in here, and it looks very similar to this one. It's just going to have twos instead of ones. Do you agree? So there's the other tangent. And what its equation will be will look like this. OK. So this is so far all I know. And it's not very much, because 
Then I have to find like where did they, like do I have to solve that, these guys simultaneously with that to find out where these points are and then it just looks like a disaster, okay? Now I'll admit, the method I'm gonna show you is non-obvious. It's a little bit like the way that we came up with this formula in the first place was non-obvious. Um, there was kind of like a, a trick in there and you're like, oh, who would have thought to have done that, okay? Well, I'm gonna try and help you think of that and that's what this clue is for. I'll come back to it in a minute. 